So then moving on to the operating systems, I know you, you brought that up. So <laughs> yeah, there's really three of them and that, that I look at for an enterprise sales motion or even a mid-market motion, anything that's complex, it's not highly transactional, high speed, you know, a month or less. So we're talking deals that are three months or more, or they could be what I look at as maybe $30,000 or more, right? And it, it works from that level all the way up to, we did a $20 million contract with Amazon Whole Foods. So there's a large range that it applies to, but the first one is really applying what I just told you about that 2080 principle in terms of who you're targeting. And then what you try to do, not what you try to do, what you execute on is essentially looking at doubling your deal size year over year, your average deal size, okay? And so the core operating system is really looking at, because there's sales methodologies out there. And so let me ask you this, Sarah, what's your thoughts on sales methodologies? We just, I just talked to a lot of people about this today. So what, what's your opinion on it? Um, on so, Well, I think there are the like kind of older traditional sales methodologies, which I'm, little bits of them, I think, apply moving forward. But I do think a lot of them need like a big old refresh. Um, and there's not necessarily like the, the modern sales methodology that I think applies today. That's how I feel about them. Exactly. Okay. So, so we're in alignment there. So we're going to get along um, because, and I don't have anything wrong with them. Like there's, I think there's like 17 out there right now, but I talked to like 20 revenue leaders and I've talked to founders most of the time aren't totally aware of them. So this is more of like, once you start getting like hyper-focused and I think out of 20 of them, not a single one only used one. They had to combine mm -hmm. multiple pieces of them together and kind of kludge it together. So this primary operating system and I call it a system because it's not a methodology. It's really stacking strategy, process, and then execution all the way down to what you say, when you say it, who you say it to, and the order you say it in so that it's fully comprehensive. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I mean by, I call it the whale scale operating system. And that's the first one, which allowed us to basically move from deal sizes that were 30 to 70 K to you know, basically 700 K to 20 million over a period of four to five years. So it, it almost hundred X the deal size by leveraging that PCP principle and then leveraging the strategy, the process and the execution. So that's the first one. So any questions on that? I don't think so. All uh, pretty clear. Okay. I'll keep rolling then. Okay. So then the second one is what I call the exponential expansion engine. And it's so crazy because so many SaaS founders have like done amazing at their product and they have the front end. So they got the primary sales engine figured out. However, what I'll find is they'll have 94% retention rate, 95, 96% retention rate. And guess what they don't do after they sell the deal? <laughs> they don't talk to their customers. Oh. They don't have a freaking secondary sales process in place. Okay. Right. And this doesn't need to be like, there's the, there's the buzz, you know, customer success, or we have account managers. That's not what I'm talking about. This is completely different because a lot of times that's more supporting them, responding to needs. And this is more proactively finding out, okay, rate us. Like what's our rating scale one through five. And I know some customer success do that, but it allows you to get product feedback, but at the same time, amp up your brand on G2 or Capterra or whatever your ratings are in a systematic way. The, the other thing it does, it allows you to provide value while you're selling. And so CS is more looked at as kind of a nurturing, I think, like take care of the customer process, which it is, right? You want to take care of your customers after the fact. But if you seed and sell the entire time that you're doing that, you're not only providing value to the customer, but then you're providing, you're really truly understanding like what the biggest problems they have and then continually, continually solving them. And then what it's going to do is basically massively amp up the amount that every average customer spends with you. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Have you heard of Palantir before? No. Okay. So it's a Peter Thiel company. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's almost like this weird company that people know about, but they don't know about. It's like 40 billion. It's valued at 40 billion and they're at a billion in revenue. So they have 60% of their revenue from their top 20 clients, which is pretty impressive. And most people don't think that you could get to a billion dollars in revenue by doing that. But they did. Right. So the secondary part, which is cool, and I, I can't remember the stats, but Salesforce, HubSpot, they leverage this as well. And basically what it is, is Palantir ads. So think about this. Think about how, how mind-blowing these numbers get. They, they basically get 36% more revenue 
from their clients every single year from their existing clients. Hmm. Okay. And so we applied this same methodology before Palantir even I knew existed or anything like that. Um, but then I found out some of these other really big companies and unicorns are applying some of the same principles. So uh, what I'm basically saying is think about the, the engine that has is if you get customers in and then you grow them by 36% year over year, that's explosive growth without a lot of additional people. Yeah. Okay. So that's the second one. Any that's questions huge. on that? <laughs> no, that's just, yeah, that's crazy. 30, 36% from existing customers is, yeah, you, it makes sense then that you can scale, as you mentioned, with like four salespeople, because so much of the uh, adding in revenue is not actually on the shoulders of your like net new uh, business motion. Cool. Exactly. Yeah. And then, and then this is where, this is where it like, so you got your primary one, your secondary one, and they're stat, they're like the foundation. Right. And then on top of it, you have this, this beautiful, what I call the, the referral operating system. And so a lot of people look at referrals as word of mouth or basically a means to just reactively come in. And so, you know, I started looking into this because I was at, I was at a conference and there was 5,000 entrepreneurs there and Tony Robbins was there. I don't, I don't know if, do you know Tony Robbins at all? Do you mm -hmm. see any of his stuff? Yeah. Okay. You're smiling. So he's got like a polarizing <laughs> yeah. kind of reaction. From people either like he's personal development, but he was actually rated by Amex as like one of the top five business consulting coaches in the world. And so there's some really good stuff. And he, he basically asked the question, he goes, okay, how many, and these are all business owners. These are all founders, business owners. He's like, how many people in the room have a referral system in place that they measure KPIs on a daily basis? How many have one, right? And out of the 5,000 people, there was maybe, I don't know, 7% of the people that raised their hand. And he goes, okay, how many people have two in place? And then, and he goes, I want everybody that has two in place, or actually he didn't, didn't raise their hand. They stood up. He goes, how many people have two in place? He's like, if you don't have two in place, sit down. And it went all the way down to like maybe 300 people in the room, 350 people in the room. And he goes, okay, that's the single best way to double the size of your company repeatedly. And I was like, so that really stuck with me. And then I started thinking about like how we got that Amazon Whole Foods deal was through a referral. Yeah, that was a $20 million deal. That changed the entire direction of the company because we later got a PE investment and an exit. And we grew from 20 million to 380 million. So it was like, okay, so it was like the light bulb started going off. So I started digging into this deeper and I found out that, that Tesla actually uses this. And so mm -hmm. Tesla has a referral program and guess what version they're on? Any ideas? Probably like a lot. <laughs> they're in version nine, right? <laughs> so they're on version nine and they got a third of their Model S uh, cars sold through referrals, mm. which is absolutely amazing. Slack actually got 97% of their users through referrals. Dropbox wow. grew 35% month over month through referrals. Mm. So basically what I'm like, okay, so when you look at mid-market, you look at enterprise, these are the, the customers that you invest so much time and energy into relationships. So why aren't companies tapping into that? Right. And so basically I created a four prong system on, on scaling customer to customer referrals. And the beautiful output of it is Sarah is that deals will close in sometimes 75% half the amount of time as a normal deal because of the transfer of brand and trust from a colleague or a, a trusted peer. Um, and then in addition, the deal sizes are 125 and 150% larger Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that they're not like bidding it out to everybody and their mother, even though it's a larger deal size because of that inherent trust that's already brought in. Yeah. So it's absolutely beautiful. And there's like four steps to it. And those four steps are really simple. So it's the pathways, the type of incentive that you have, the emotional peaks that the customer has, and then the sales process. So the behavior design, like how do you align the customer emotional peaks with, with the sales process? And then last but not least, it's persuasion. It's really leveraging um, I love Robert Cialdini's work. Have you, you heard him mm -hmm. read his book influence or, at all or persuasion bits of it? Yeah. It's yeah. It's, it's pretty long. It's pretty long. <laughs> it's like 500 pages, but when you stack all those together, you start to create a new category of, Ooh, I hit my mic. I'm so excited. Um, you start to create a new category of opportunities that come in. That's different from outbound and it's different from inbound. It's, it's that middle category that.